So we're here at 1722 Pressbury in the Sandtown Winchester neighborhood of Baltimore, West Baltimore actually. Um, this is an area that we've dubbed Tubman House. It was originally a physical structure, now it's more or less a community. And we're with Asar who is our farm manager here. Before this was here, um, there was houses here. Um, abandoned houses that have been dilapidated for years. They were tore down by the city and the lot was just left vacant. Um, it became a, just like any other vacant lot that you see here in West Baltimore, it just became a dumping grounds and it was wasted space and it wasn't utilized. Um, what we did was we came here, we assessed the property, um, built some raised beds from reclaimed materials, got some compost and filled the beds with good compost and started cultivating everything from fruits to vegetables here. We have a, a chicken coop, we're gonna raise chickens. The structure here will actually be the chicken coop. That structure there is going to be where we do aquaponics, so we're gonna have fish there. And we're also gonna grow herbs and things um, that are, will be powered by the aquaponics. We also grow crops, we're doing um, hops eventually, you know, uh, to sell. Um, but we also do a lot of food for the community. So there are anything from like tomatoes, peppers, potatoes, onions, whatever people want, okra. We invite them to come participate. We also let them know this is for you. Everybody loves the chickens. Right now over there is Evil. She laid one egg and now she's getting ready for, to lay another. And blue eggs over here. The reason why we call her blue eggs is because, well, she lays blue eggs. I always love to come here and work with the chickens and help help them plant food and stuff. See? Evil, she laid two eggs. The 1619 Coalition, we took that name when we originally took the house from the city. We were illegally occupying it. I mean, we felt like we had moral law on our side. But we took it because 1618 is generally referred to as the date that the first Africans were enslaved in the U.S. I mean, it actually goes back a little further than that, but we felt like that was a point of reference. And the house itself that we occupied was 1618 Pressbury. So we were like, okay, we'll be the 1619 Coalition. And it was different folks, different activists, artists, and people who were engaged in the process of taking the house. Where does all this stuff come from? Okay, so the, the wood that made the raised bed boxes actually come out of these houses that are here. It's reclaimed wood that comes out of uh, abandoned houses that's been deconstructed. Um, these are old uh, joists, floor joists actually, they're made out of pine, some of it poplar. Um, the raised bed box wood is my, maybe about 60 years old, so it's a way of offsetting things that would just go to the landfill and reuse it. Um, what about the bricks? Now the bricks, the bricks actually come from other houses that are around here that have been deconstructed or some of them actually fell over. Um, and these bricks are over 100 years old. Um, and what we have with the hydroponics hut is that these true two by fours and two by sixes are also old wood. It is like pine wood and it's very dense wood. It's actually very beautiful, which otherwise would be thrown away, but it, it's very good for building, it's very strong. What's this over here? This is a building project here that we're doing is a, um, a earth and fire earthen um, brick oven. Like a so, pizza uh, oven? Yeah, pizza oven. I see. Earthen oven. Is there pizza yeah. in your future? Uh, pizza, baked bread. You know, we saw this at another farm. We went to Detroit and it was a it was a real nice thing. They did something with the children for Earth Day. They made pizza and made bread. So it's something that we could also um, utilize. This is the future home of our bio seller. We're searching the web. Um, Rhonda and Dominique saw the video of Chateau Huff with Mansfield and we said that this is something that we would like to do here and we looked at the practicality of it of it being a bio seller you could grow food all year round with less inputs utilizing the old foundation of houses that was something that we, we're already into reusing um, reclaimed materials from the houses but now this is a way to literally uh, re reuse the whole structure you know so um, what you see here will have the same sort of setup with uh, uh, polycarbonate glass facing the south side of this and uh, sun shining down and utilizing the cellar as grow beds. We would do things like aquaponics and different sorts of plants and we'd be able to extend our growing season, possibly even doing some tropical fruit trees. You know, this is not anything new. This is things that people are doing all across the country. It's definitely part of the food movement, but it's to address um, food apartheid. 
So making this food available to the community, initially making most of the food free to the community where they can pick at their own um, time. And also it's a training ground. Building these raised bed boxes is a way to teach uh, vocational skills to the youth. Um, it's a way to tie in science and STEM. And today we have everything from rainwater catchment systems to building solar panels on top of the aquaponics um, shed. Um, also looking at dealing with other aspects as far as like growing the food, but also how to prepare it. So out here we do things like prepare smoothies, we prepare meals on stoves. You know, the children are able to sample these meals, make recipes, take them back to their families, and then duplicate them. You know, so they learn about culinary arts, health and wellness, and urban agriculture, as well as any other program we do here like literacy or um, tutoring. What we're doing here is we're building community. It's self-empowerment. It's how in our communities we redefine our own lives and we tell our own narrative, our own story, regardless of what the media states. You know, it's a lot of respect for these places that are here. Um, building this garden, it is a place that grows food, but it's also something that changed the physical structure of this neighborhood. You know, um, and that does something to the neighborhood. It does something for the spirit of the neighborhood. You know, it not only gives hope, but it's an example of what these vacant spaces should be used for. As far as statistics are concerned, it's ground zero for a lot of the hardship that you see in urban cities. You know, um, however, you know, it's also a place where the police department gets more funding than any other district in Maryland or any other county in Maryland. You know, so it's, you have a lot of money that's coming in here that's invested into policing, but not into the community, not into creating jobs, not into education for youth, not to supplementing people's uh, uh, diets or food. And, you know, so there, it's a lot of things that are missing here, you know, and this is just an example of how you can bring those things back. <laughs>